Hello. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me this evening for my online workshop. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com, and I'm just excited to be with you here paper crafting this evening. So hopefully the sound is okay. If it's not, let me know. I'm, I'm experimenting with some things. I'm having some tech issues. I'm trying some different uh, strategies a little bit to see if I can get it to work out a little bit better. So um, it's 7.30 here, uh, Eastern time. And I think we're going to have people joining us from all over, which is very exciting. So I'll just give it a moment um, and let this kind of pop up in some news feeds. I see Carmen and Kathy and Jean and Barbara. So glad you guys are here. Yes, we're going to make four fantabulous cards tonight. Well, I think they are. So it should be a good time, right? So if this is your first time joining me, uh, let me know in the comments, right? I want to know if you've not been here before. Um, I, I see some familiar faces, well, names for sure, as, uh, as we're going down here in the comments. But uh, yeah. So what are we going to do tonight? So tonight, the whole point is to share the love of paper crafting, how much fun it is, right? We're going to have a good time. We're going to let ourselves relax, uh, take a moment from everything else, and then just enjoy some time together, right? Paper crafting actually releases, release, releases blah, um, those natural endorphins that just make you happy, right? Um, and the best part is I get to share that joy with others simply by sending a handmade card to them. And you can do that too, right? So for those that don't know me, I've been a demonstrator for 19 years and I'm married to a fantastic, very supportive man. His name is Mike. And I have two grown children. I'm very proud of both of them. My daughter um, just moved back to the area. So she's about an hour away now. And then my son is in Connecticut. He's in the Navy, so he just made chief, which I hear is a huge deal. I don't really know, but I hear it as, and I'm so proud either way, right? I have two super cute grandchildren. One is a six-year-old, uh, Arlie, and I get to see her a lot. And then there is a year-and-a-half-old Bonnie, and I don't get to see her as often, but she is still in my heart all the time, right? All right. So what is this we're doing tonight? So this is an online workshop. So historically, I've done home parties where a host would invite their friends. We'd come teach some paper crafting. The host would keep all the samples I make, I make that evening, and then they'd earn rewards based on what their friends purchased that evening. So tonight, I'm the host, but I'm giving the rewards back to those that are ordering as part of the ordering special. So I've already posted links to the catalogs if you don't have hard copies. Um, there's an ordering special with a special host code. And if you need any assistance, I'm happy to help you. Um, I would grab your catalog, keep it close by with a sticky note and notepad so you can jot down all the things that you want to add to your wish list. There will be a door price form that it may have posted already. I'm not exactly sure the timing I had that set up. But um, there'll be a door price form, fill that out, and there'll be a random drawing for all the cards that I make this evening. All right, let's see. Yes, the host code has been posted. Again, I'm happy to help you. Any order will get a card from me with the PDF tutorials for the projects we're making tonight. And then when your order hits $50 or more, again, using that host code, you're gonna get the packets, the kits to make all four cards, the tutorial, plus you also get the October Rustic Harvest All-Star Tutorial Bundle. So I um, gift that every month, uh, the All-Star Tutorial Bundle, um, every month with any order over $50. So um, that counts for this workshop as well. All right. So again, I've posted the link to the catalog. So you have them. Um, so let's go ahead and switch the camera over and let's get working on our projects, right? So excited. Yes. All right. Let's see if I can click this, find my tools to switch over. That's always the hard part, right? Let's see. There we go. Got it switched over. Hey, Joanne and Sharon and Susan and Barbara. Yes. Good, 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 good. I'm seeing everyone, I hope. Hopefully, hopefully. All right. So tonight I'm featuring a couple different products. So first of all, the Celebrate with Tags Stamp and Die Bundle. 
love, 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 love this one. So this is in the, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, July through December mini catalog. I still refer to it as the holiday catalog, but this is an awesome bundle that is in there. And at first glance, you're like, oh, tag, that's all I can do with it. No, 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 no. Tonight, we're not even making a tag. We're using the tag elements, but we are not making tags. We're making four cards tonight. And then I've also pulled in, and I'm just showing it this way. There is a fantastic host stack of designer paper in the back of the mini catalog on page 86 and 87 called Celebrate Everything. This is a 12 by 12 inch paper stack. And when I say paper stack, it's 48 sheets for each of 12 double-sided double -sided designs. And they're so fun. And there's all seasons are in there. So I wanted you guys to know that's what I'm using as our main focal point as we work through our projects tonight. So if you've got any questions as we go, let me know. I'll try to watch the comments. Of course, I will go back and answer any questions that anybody has as we go. So let's start off. Let me show you the cards we're going to make tonight so you know what you're in for. Hey, Paula. Yep, Jean. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think the tutorial bundles are fabulous. So one of the projects or the first project we're going to make is this super pretty. I love it. Very, very wintry. Uh, be jolly card with the little mittens and a snowflake. Love the designer paper in the background. And then we've made a pocket on the inside. So your gift card or money could fit right down into that pocket if you wanted to use it in that way. Now, if you don't want to make this a gift card holder, just um, cut this part off and you don't have to make the pocket, right? The second one, also a gift card holder. And this one's fun because you've got this little pocket here. So you can put the two from, you could put a gift card right in here, or when you open it up, you can add one right in this section here. Now you could also put um, something else in here as well, a little treat or something. Uh, it depends on what you wanna do with it, right? All right, the next one. So those first two were Christmassy. This one could be Christmassy, but I think this is a little more birthday. So I love this bundle because it allows you to do a lot of things with it. So you've got this project here, and again, I've added a pocket to the inside so you could give a gift card if if you chose chose to. Well, last one. Let's bring it all into the love season, little Valentine's. You've got the tag on the front. And then I've left the inside blank on this one so that I can choose to use it for whatever occasion I might need it when that comes around. All right? You guys ready to give it a go? Yes? All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So again, I'm not going to be posting measurements for these projects. That's going to be exclusive to those that order. But I will talk about measurements as I go. And if I miss something, please let me know. So this is a standard card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half. And we're just going to fold this in half. This is Pacific Point cardstock. So you will see, oh, what did I do? There it is. Um, you will see a complete supply list um, be posted in a short bit. Right, so you'll have the supply list, so you know what you need to order, um, things that you might need, but uh, you won't have the measurement. All right, so then we're gonna add a piece of the designer series paper. It's five and a half by three, and we're gonna adhere that right to the front of this card base. Now, my adhesive of choice is stamp and seal. I know that that is not the adhesive for everyone. Everyone has a personal preference. I didn't realize how big of a preference this is, but it definitely, definitely you, you end up with a preference. So I love the tape runner, it's super sticky. My cards uh, stay together very nicely, they don't fall apart and I don't get all sticky. Now you're gonna see me use some other adhesives as well as we work through the night um, because sometimes you just need some different things. Oh good, you love the Valentine, I'm glad Jean. Okay, next layer is a piece of basic white cardstock that we've cut with the, um, scallop contour dies, and it's the second largest rectangle that I use to cut this layer right here. Now I've also cut a piece of designer series paper, and this is four and three quarters by three and a half, and I'm just going to adhere it right into the center of that label. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, this is from that same designer series paper pack. Now these cards are are projects that we actually made in our diamonds team meeting. So I have a demonstrator team and I have named them the diamonds. 
right? Because they're sparkly and fun. I love it. Um, so my diamonds team, we do, we gather every month for those that choose to participate. And we have the opportunity or they have the opportunity to participate in the team meeting make and takes. So this particular set of cards was one of our recent team meeting make and takes. So we do a class, a full card class every month. It's not always card. I shouldn't say it's always cards. It's primarily cards because that is primarily my business. Those of you that follow me on a regular basis know that I'm a card maker. So most of the time it's cards, but I will say every once in a while we'll break out something a little bit different. Okay, next, let's go ahead and stamp the mittens for the focal points. So I've got a, a piece of white cardstock and I'm gonna bring in my stamp apparatus. So this mitten image is quite a solid stamped image. And I found when stamping this, I was really having trouble getting a good stamped image. Excuse me. So I felt like if I could use my stamp apparatus, which is my stamp positioning tool, that I could do a little bit better and get a better uh, stamped image with this. So I'm just gonna lay this. I've got messy scrap paper down here. Kind of see where my placement needs to be. And we will go ahead and just add a magnet to hold that cardstock in place. Now you have to be careful with your magnets. These are, I think what they call earth magnets and they snap together really easily. And when they do, they tend to break. So you have to be careful with that when you're using these. Most of the time, I don't put both magnets on the front. I will put one on the back, but um, for this case, I want to have a nice secure, um, layer. So got my white card stock. Let's see, what did I measure that? That was <laughs> about five and a half by two and a half, approximately. So I'm going to ink this mitten up with Pacific Point ink. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp that image down. And if you're happy with the image, you're done. If you're not happy with the image, the beauty is you can ink this again Stamp it again. Let's go ahead and do that. Add a little more ink to it and it's gonna line up exactly where you had it. So this is the point of using the Stamparatus with these really solid images like this. It works out fantastic, right? Okay, so now we wanna move this over. I'm just gonna eyeball where this needs to be because there's no set right or wrong way. I need three mittens and I have plenty of cardstock to get three mittens. So let's see if I can move that over just a smidge. And we're gonna repeat this and we're gonna get three different mittens out here. So you can see the difference, one, one layer versus two. It's just a really great way to get that nice stamped image. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna flip this for this last one. Not that it needs to be flipped, but I'm going to. All right, we'll ink that up. So have you guys played with this bundle yet? I'd love to know, leave me a comment. All right, I'm happy with my mitten. I'm gonna pull these off. Now I will clean this later. I don't have it with me, but I would use my Simply Chamois to clean this because it's very portable and easy to use to clean something that's on this, uh, this surface here. If you're not familiar with what that is, let me know and um, I can pull out something and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I am going to take the coordinating mitten die here. I'm gonna die cut these three mittens. I've got all three mittens right here. Cute, 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 cute. I love them. Oh, you have the bundle, but you've not used it yet. What? I hope that you'll break it out tonight, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get some mittens right down on our card. So I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna put one down. I know, oh, look at, I stamped on the back too. Ha, ha, ha. You never know what I'm gonna do. I like to reuse scrap paper that I've messed up. And obviously that's what I did here. So I'm gonna take one and put it down with liquid glue. Now you could use stamp and seal if you prefer. In this case, I use liquid glue just because of the shape of what I was dealing with. 
and let's see if I can find some dimensionals here. I like dimensionals. I like lots of height on my projects. Now, know as we're working, if you don't want things popped up as much as I'm popping them up, you do not have to. Sometimes if you get too many layers with too many things popped up, you know, in my opinion, too many is very relative, right? Um, but it can add some cost to it, which will um, mean that you need additional postage. All right. So next, I'm going to pull in my dies again. And this time, I'm going to pull in this snowflake right here. And I cut one of those with the polished pink cardstock. We're going to go and adhere that right to the front with a little bit of liquid glue. Now, you could use glue dots for this as well if you prefer. I like the liquid glue for this. And I'm not a liquid glue fan. If you know me, it's it's one of those things where it's a love-hate relationship. I don't like being sticky, but sometimes it's the right adhesive, right? Oh, you don't have the bundle yet, Joanne. It's okay. Now, you could use any other wintry stamp set that you've got if you don't have this particular bundle. I, I love this bundle. And um, if you didn't love it before, maybe you will before the evening's over. Maybe you won't. I don't know. It's up to you. But there's a lot of other things that you could use as well. Anything wintry goes great with this paper. All right. I'm going to bring in Memento Black and my Be Jolly stamp. I'm going to ink this up really good. Nice, got a nice dark sentiment. And then we've got a die that lines up with this as well. Let's see if I can pull that out. So it's this one right here. So you can die cut that. Now, I will tell you, this particular stamp, you could easily fussy cut with your paper, paper snips, right? It's a, it would be an easy one to cut. Um, wouldn't cause you too many problems. So you could do it that way as well if you didn't want to die cut it. All right, so I've already die cut this. I'll bring this in. Now I've got a piece of ribbon that is about seven inches long. And I love this little gingham black and white ribbon. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back of this. Oh, look, see another one I messed up. Oh, how good is that? It lines up almost perfectly though. Not as well stamped. See, I reuse my scraps a lot, as you can tell. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to fold this into three, a third, a third, a third-ish. I say ish because it might not be exact. And kind of zigzag that ribbon like that. Kind of a fun look. And then I want to add this to my card front. Now, I need to remember this, this mitten is popped up. So if I add this here, this is going to be popped up already. So I really only need a dimensional on this outer edge here. Now, let's see. Because it's a skinny area, I'm going to go ahead and cut from this side edge here. So you guys can use 100% of these sheets, right? You don't want any of that to go to waste. And then I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue right here. Not that I don't already have some steel there taken out, but we'll just add a little extra liquid glue. And then we're going to add this right on the front of our project like that. And then that's all tacked down nicely. Cute, right? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, yeah, it totally would be cute with the um, penguin set. Oh, Jean, you have to have knee replacement surgery. I'm so sorry. I hate to hear that. But hopefully you will feel better soon. Okay, next I'm going to pull out the, I think it's called the Fancy Sequin Assortment. So this is, if you haven't seen this, this is actually in the annual catalog. And it's three, and I've used a lot. It's three containers all in one. So you've got your pinks, your greens, and your blues. And it's full of fabulous sequins. And I love them for many reasons. There's multiple colors, and, and I love that there's gold and silver and some neutrals in here as well. So while these blues may not be the same blues I'm using, they do play nicely on multiple projects. So I just want to add a sprinkling of these sequins on here. Now, it, I do find that if the adhesive, or uh, sorry, if the sequins don't have an adhesive backing, 
sometimes they're a little harder to use um, because they can be a little tedious and stick to you. But I found if I put my glue dots down first and then grab the sequence and place them, that I'm a little happier in the long run. So let's grab a variety of these. And there's multiple little fun images in here. I just want to make sure I don't have it upside down. So let's go ahead and grab one. See if we can get that to stick in place. Let's grab another piece. Put these down. And see, even though the colors aren't exact, they're looking pretty darn good with this, right? really like that about it. This one needs to flip over. Okay. Love that little iridescent feeling to it. And what is this? I think that's a pearl. Oh, let's add that on there if I can get it to flip over. Yeah, nice pearl. So, so pretty, see? It just adds a little shimmer, sparkle. Very wintry looking, I think. All right, I'll put these away for now until we get to the next project. So on the inside layer, because I wanted a pocket, just so I could make this a gift card holder if I wanted, um, I have cut this five and a quarter. Let me double check my measurements so I don't tell you incorrectly. Five and a quarter by five and a half. So five and a quarter by five and a half. And I've scored this at four inches. So then you can just fold that up and make a little pocket right out of that. Nice. Let's go ahead and put some adhesive right along the edge there. Now, if you prefer to use tear and tape, you can. Or you could use something like um, a seal plus if you prefer. Now I'm gonna run my bone folder in here because I feel like it helps open up the pocket a little bit by doing that. And then I wanna go ahead and add this designer paper to bring that design to the inside. So I'm keeping these super simple, but I still wanna take some of the elements that I really enjoy from my more complex cards into the inside of these cards. So I've got a fabulous pocket there. Now you could stamp a sentiment if you want, but I am just gonna take my other mitten and adhere that right there on that bottom of the pocket. Look, ha, another one I stamped on the back. You guys are gonna bust me on all my secrets, right? Yeah, the mitten and dies were what drew you to this set. Yeah, I definitely, if you can't tell, they're definitely my favorite for sure. I love the mittens. And you know, and the tag dies are just fantastic too. And, and they're so versatile. All right, so I got my mitten down. And then now you can add your gift card if you want to, or a little bit of money, or just a little card or something separate. You can use a pocket for a lot of different things, I think. All right, and so we're gonna just add this right to the inside of the card. Cute, right? How fun. You guys like this one? All right, so that one down, three to go. All right, let me move on to the next one. So this is the one we're gonna do next. Get to my cheat sheet here. Now I've got my card base and I like to use thick basic white. So this is 11 inches by four and a quarter and I've scored it in half at five and a half. So you've got your half halfway point. And then I've also scored it again. Let me double check and make sure my measurements are right. At two and a quarter. So two and a quarter in from this edge. Okay, so it's not in half, it's a shorter pocket. Let's go ahead and give those creases. And then also notice it's got a little divot cut out. So I did that with this circle die that's right in this set to kind of give me a little tab to be able to pull, easily pull my gift card in and out of the pocket here. Okay, so we want to decorate both sides of this panel. So I've pulled in lovely designer paper. And this measures, let's see, three inches by four inches. I'm gonna put that on the inside of the pocket. I think it leaves a fun touch, right? A little surprise having it on the inside of the pocket. And then we'll close that. And then it'll be on the outside as well. Again, there are so many great prints to choose from in this set. Okay, 
I'm going to go ahead and close the pocket while I'm here. So again, you could use stamp and seal if you, or uh, um, tear and tape. That's what I'm trying to say. Tear and tape if you prefer or steel plus if you prefer. But I am finding that this works just fine to be able to put that in my pocket. Nice. Got a good crease on this outside. All right. So I want to bring in one of the tags. So I die cut. This largest tag here with pop from Poppy Parade cardstock. Yes, there are some really fun samples in the catalog as well. Jean, you are right. They've done a great job with this particular bundle, I think. Now, I did find when I die cut this one that it is not as easy as you might think to fold these little side tabs in. The score lines are not as deep. Oh, well, probably because I went backwards. Um, the score lines are not as deep as they would be on some dies. I think it's okay, but it's not as easy as some. They got a little little extra work there. Now, I meant to grab my paper trimmer, and let me grab it now, since I didn't, even though I had it on my list to do. I forgot. Now, I want to go ahead and cut off about, let's see if I can get this off here. I want to cut off about an inch from this top layer here. Let me see if I can pull this in here. So about this layer here, and I say an inch from this flat edge here. So if I were to pull this in here, I'm putting this little tab at one inches, and this doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to cut that off to kind of make this fun pocket, shorter pocket that's on the front. Now, you can choose to wrap these tabs to the back, or you can put them um, on the top. I'm going to put them on the top just because I want them to be fully hidden. We'll give that a good crease again. And let's put a little bit of liquid glue. Now, you could use tear and tape here as well, but I found that on this particular die, the tabs are kind of skinny. So tear and tape is a little bit wider, so you'd have to um, either clip it so it's not quite as wide or folded over somehow so all right so i'm going to set this aside and let's see i've got a little little shot glass here i'm going to put that weight on it and let that sit for just a moment so we're going to do our stamped layers so that we can get those ready so as you can see on the front i've got a lovely die cut label that we're going to stamp the merry christmas on and that was cut with this rectangle right in this die set. So I stayed all in this die set, which is awesome in my opinion. And let's pull in Merry Christmas and we're gonna stamp that in the memento black. Now here again, because these are really bold images, if you were concerned about the depth of ink, you totally could put this on the stamp apparatus. Let's see how I do. I hope I do okay, because we're going with it no matter what. Yay. <laughs> I like when it works out, right? It doesn't always work out, but I'm glad that it did in this instance. All right, so I've got that piece and then let's go ahead and stamp what's gonna go on the inside. So I have a two from on this little card that I put in there. So let's see, that card is da -da, three and a quarter by two is this little white card here and we're going to stamp that two from in memento black perfect if you guys have questions on anything let me know um you know like i said these are the projects that we made in our diamonds team meet. oh i caught an edge see where i got the edge right there terrible now if that bothers you you can flip it over and then maybe add another layer i'm going to leave it alone because I think I'll just make it worse. Hate that I caught an edge, but I sure did. Um, so yes, so we made these in our, our team meeting for our make and take. And um, if you have any desire to join us, get your products at a discount, which is a great deal. I would love to have you join us and be part of our team. 
Like I said, we have a good time each month and there's a great deal going on right now. So I'm stringing in about 11 inches of the thread of the uh, ribbon right through the hole. And I'm gonna tie a bow here. Let's go ahead and make sure I'm in camera. I tend to wanna pull to myself as I'm working. I don't know if you guys do that as well. And the way I have this set up, it's a little bit of a reach. So I'm not very centered here. So I'm gonna see if I can pull this out just a smidge more. Get a little bit more centered with my ribbon. Get my two loops. Yes, a sand eraser. You know, I don't do well with a sand eraser. By the time I can get the ink off, I have a hole in my cardstock. So maybe I go too far. Jean, you'll have to give me some tips on that. I do have a sand eraser. I had a customer, Nancy, I don't know if she's on tonight, but Nancy had given me a sand eraser that I use or try to use, I should say. So just clip off what you don't want on this lovely label here. So then this will slide right down into the pocket. Cute. So a gift card would fall in there as well. And then this is going to dimension right to the front after I put the designer paper down. But you got to be careful where you place your dimensional. So we'll get to that in just a moment. So I've got my piece of designer paper. Let's see if that fits in there. Okay. Looks like I cut it a little uh, long. So why don't I, since I have, actually, no, I kind of like that all the way to the edge. No, I'm going to cut an eighth off either way. So what I've got down here is this piece of paper is supposed to be. Da -da -da. Let's see what I've got written down. Well, we'll, we'll just measure it, right? It's two inches by, I think it's supposed to be two and an eighth. I had it a little long. So two and an eighth. See if that's better. Yep, much better. Two by two and an eighth works better. So yeah, Jean, if you've got a trick on a sand eraser, let me know. Because like I said, I don't do well with it. Perfect. And then we're going to pop this up on the front. Now, I just need to make sure I don't put dimensionals on the side that's going to fall off the edge here. So what I like to do is I'm going to put two dimensionals on the end of the tag, right? And then I will go ahead and add another two dimensionals and I will keep them close together in the center on the end of the pocket here. That way I don't go too far, but I'm still nice and stable. And then I can add this right to the front with no problem. Cute, 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 cute. All right, so now this is ready to adhere right to my card base. So again, same type of thoughts. I'm gonna put my adhesive here. And then I want to put my adhesive here. And we'll lay this right out on our card base here. You could use liquid glue if you prefer. I think stamp and seal works just fine. It's pretty darn sturdy. So cute. I love it. All right. So we've got our pocket on the inside like we did on our original. And then we need to add our little sprinkling of our sequence. So this time I'm going to pull in the green one. Okay. Let's grab a few and put those in the lid. Give us something to work with. All right. So I am going to add some liquid glue. Put a couple up here. And maybe let's put one there. And we'll put a couple more down here. So all I say is don't overthink that. You know what I mean? I've had a lot of people say, I'm not really sure where to put the embellishments. Just choose and put them down, right? Don't overthink it. it. It will be fine. I like to work in odd numbers where it makes sense. But, you know, that's a little subjective as well, right? Like my version of odd numbers in one minute might be different than it is 15 minutes later. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? So, like, I look at that as an odd. There's three, right? And then I'll put two more at the bottom, which technically isn't even. But when I look at the whole thing, it's an odd. I know. 
I change the rules to make up with what I want. <laughs> do you guys do that? Yes. All right. So if you have any interest in getting your products at a discount, as I was saying, there is, granted, the starter kit is always an awesome deal, but there is an even better deal going on right now through Monday. So there's only a few days left to get to take advantage of it. But the starter kit special is $155 of the product of your choice in your starter kit um, for $99. It ships for free, so you just pay tax. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I love this. You know, it's silly, but I love the designer paper inside that pocket. I think that's so fun. Just a fun card. All right, so two down. Two are done. Okay, so let's work on our third one. So the next one, to me, this is a birthday card. It doesn't have to be a birthday card, but I put birthday on the inside. So I'm going to count it as a birthday card. Again, super fast and easy and simple. The little rogue sequin here which we're going to pull in those green sequins again. So I can just set that aside and grab those in. So I've got my Granny Apple Green card base. Let me get to my cheat notes so I tell you the measurements. So again, this is eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm going to fold this in half for my card base. So how many of you guys joined us for Maker's Mojo this past weekend? I'd love to see in the comments if you joined us. So I've got designer series paper. I've got two pieces that I'm going to put on the front. And these are three inches by four inches. We're just going to adhere these flat. Oops. Okay. So if my Stampin' Steel is not running, I find that if I just run it on my silicone craft sheet, it fixes it magically yay and i don't get all sticky which i like even better and it works great because what happens is when i'm using it i tend to pull the tape off further down in the roller which will cause it to not run very well all right so i've got my two pieces of designer paper down yay barbara you love you loved mojo mojo's fun i love mojo so if you guys don't know what mojo is makers mojo is an online crafting retreat that I do. I partner with um, my friends, Melissa Kerman, Audra Monk, Joe Blackburn, and Amory Heil. And we have a two-day fabulous weekend of crafting inspiration. We just had it this past weekend. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so for this one, I cut just half of this tag. So this is gonna give you a score line. So you do have to cut that. But I cut that and then I use this lovely detailed die and ran it through to add those little holes at the bottom of the tag just to change it up. Fun, right? I did that ahead of time. And then I've got my piece of ribbon, which is about five inches. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to poke it through the hole. Okay, and then I'll take these two ends and push it up through the loop. Let's see, so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay. And I'm going to pull that tight. So that kind of snugs up that ribbon and gives it a really pretty, pretty finish. And then I can clip off what I don't need. Right. Give it a nice end, nice end to it. Now I have this sticking out past the end of the card, and I think that's okay. If that drives you nuts, then don't do that. Right. All right. So I bet I have stamping on the back of this piece too. Ah, I do. <laughs> Yep, that's what happens, I use scrap. All right, so I'm gonna put this down with dimensional. Now I've got these ends. I can either not worry about being able to see the dimensional through the hole, or I could use a skinny piece again off this side edge so that I don't get the dimensional where the holes are. Let's do that. I'm just clipping the ends. Again, use that whole sheet of dimensionals. It's good stuff. You don't want to waste it. So, Mo uh, so Barbara says the mojo is awesome. The event challenge me challenges me to try new things. It does me as well, right? Um, it's interesting because it's such a creative group. 
an inspiring group of people. And um, we know that you guys have high expectations. So we try really hard to bring a good variety to you. So, you know, you might experience things that you've seen before, um, but maybe haven't seen in a while, but you still learn new things with that. And then of course, there's always things that you've never tried. At least for me, there's always things I've never tried. All right, so next, I've got a circle that I die cut with this die. And I'm gonna stamp the Let's Celebrate You in Memento Black. So our next mojo will be in January. I think it's the 27th and 28th. We have registration starting on Tuesday of next week, early bird registration. So if you've joined us before and you want to join us again, you can. If you've not joined us before and want to join us this next round, we'd love to have you. Again, it's a lot of fun. Um, you could even gift Maker's Mojo to a friend. You know, we're coming up on the holiday season. Just going to clean this stamp, a little scrub and mist. I prefer scrub and mist. So I have the stamp and scrub and then the mist. You just spray one side, wipe your stamp off, and then you can dry it off on the other side if you'd like to. I prefer this over the chamois. So I use the chamois only with my Stamparatus. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but that is what I personally prefer. Um, so that's what you'll see me do. But you just need something to clean your stamp. And I like the mist because it moisturizes the red rubber. Um, so anyway whatever that's worth. Let's move this up so you guys can see me. I realize I'm not totally in camera sometimes. All right, so I stamped Let's Celebrate You in Memento. Now I'm gonna come back. I want to celebrate. I don't care if I get the let's and the you very well, but I want to celebrate because I'm gonna do a two-tone tag here. Oh yeah, Joe's bubble technique was super cool, right? I thought so for sure. Okay, and then we're gonna take this and I'm going to use this little banner die right here. And I'm going to cut out the celebrate part. Maybe. I say I'm going to, but I can't even pick it up. Right? Okay. We've got it. Perfect. So we've got the celebrate, which is going to go across this label here. So fun. Let's give it that two-tone look. And then I wanted to pull in a couple candles, but I didn't want the candles to disappear. Um, so I pulled in some shimmery, like glimmer paper. So this is the Ombre Sweet Sorbet. So this is the in color pack. And I cut one of the striped candles and one of the polka dot candles. They cut two at a time, which is nice because you can get two cards ready at a time. Let's go ahead and poke out these little bits I had not poked out. But I did it in that glimmer paper. And so you've got an ombre from a light to dark. So you get a lot of variation when you're uh, cutting out of that paper. And I love that. I, you know, it makes every card a little bit unique in that manner. So kind of fun. So I want to pop these in just to give a little interest on this tag. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and put our silicone craft sheet down because that will be better. So we've got our label here and our two candles. So let's see, I'm gonna just use stamp and seal. I know that's a little crazy, but I'm gonna do it. So I got my stamp and seal and I'm gonna place this down, how about right there on that label. Whoops, get that little bit out of there. Put some on the other one. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Now, is this sticky in here? It sure is. Now, I'm going to put a label over the top of that, but if you're worried about that other part being sticky, just take your um, embossing buddy and tap it, and it will make that adhesive so it's not tacky anymore, which is kind of nice, right? All right, so let's grab a few of our Stampin' Dimensionals. Again, I'm going to grab from the edge here again because it's narrow. And I can make sure I'm not going to have a problem. Now, I probably could have put regular ones on this. But this way, I know for sure I'm good. I'm just going to center that best I can. Love it. And I've got my fabulous two-tone tag. And on the back, 
Let's add some dimensionals and we'll add this to the front of our tag. Just fun, just a fun way to use it. Oh, you, you had old dried stamps, Jean, with, and you were able to revive them with the stamp and mist, letting them soak. Nice. Yeah, you know, um, red rubber stamps can get kind of dry and brittle if you don't take care of them. Um, I'm not saying you didn't take care of your stamp. It could have just been old, right? We all age. <laughs> and so it could have just been one of those things as well. But uh, yeah, the stamp and mist, I think, really... Um, keeps your red rubber in good shape. You can use it on photopolymer as well. So here I'm just gonna add some glue dot or some glue, not glue dots, dots of glue. How about that? We'll say it that way. Um, so I got my little three and I've got three up there too. Why not? Or did I just do two? Yeah, I just did two. I couldn't tell if the print was uh, a glue or not. Terrible in it, my eyes as I age. All right, so let's add some of these fabulous gems up here. Add that little green one. And so again, the colors don't match exactly in what I'm using, what I've chosen to use versus these sequins. But again, I think they coordinate really nicely. So it's okay that they're not an exact color match, you know, because you've got this iridescent green, which kind of takes on the color that you're playing with a little bit here. I'll put one of those there. I love these little shimmery white ones. Those are some of my favorites. I'm starting to get sticky, so it's starting to stick to my fingers, even though that's not the plan. All right. They're perfect. I oh, you use them online? Jean, I'm not following. You gotta tell me more. Give me a little more context on what you're referring to. I missed it. Okay. So then on the inside, I've I've created this pocket with the happy birthday. So we'll do that next. So we've got a piece of basic white that's four inches by seven and a half. And I've scored this at um, five and a quarter. So it creates this little pocket here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this first because if I mess it up, I can fold it to the inside and maybe you won't notice. I do that a lot, mess up stuff and have to repurpose it. So if you get a card from me in the mail, if you take it apart, which I don't want you to take it apart, but if you do take it apart, you're gonna find that there might be some surprises or things on the inside. All right, I can't tell if I'm straight, so we're gonna hope, yeah, I'm good with it. Maybe not the most centered, but I'm gonna go with it. All right, so then this can be my pocket. I'm just gonna add some stamp and seal right along here. Again, you could use tear and tape if you prefer or seal plus. Give it a little extra strength if you're concerned about that. And then again, I like to loosen up that pocket just a smidge. And we're going to put this right down on our card inside. So it's a simple inside, but we still put something on the inside. Oh, good. You guys are liking them? Good. I'm glad. You know, these are, you know, if you do a lot of gift card holders, these are a great way to do them and just kind of change it up a little bit, right? It's They're not hard. There's not a lot involved with them, but I do think they're super pretty. Oh, looks like I, I got a little rogue with my sequin here and it decided to jump off my card because I didn't let it dry long enough. There we go. We got it back on there. I just, this is my my peeve with liquid glue is it takes 12 hours to dry. It doesn't take 12 hours, but I'm exaggerating. But it feels like it to me. It's painful, painfully long. <laughs> All right, we'll move that over. Last one. Let's pull in our little love card. And I love this because it could be an anniversary made with love, right? It could be an anniversary. It could be a birthday. You could do this for a lot of different occasions as well. Let's move to my cheat list. All right, so we've got another thick white card base, four and a quarter by 11, and we're gonna fold this in half. 
All right, so I told you a little bit about our starter kit special. If you've got you've got questions, please let me know. If you're not already a demonstrator, I'd be happy to help you unlock all the demonstrator perks. If you um, have any interest in Makers Mojo, again, that registration opens up on Monday. Now, for all of you guys that are brand new stampers out there, sometimes this can be a little overwhelming to get started. You're like, oh my gosh, I need all these tools and supplies, and, and you actually don't. You can start with our exclusive, all-inclusive, all, all ah, can't even speak, card kits, or kits, not a little more cards. But you've got lots of choices there, um, and we have lots of different, um, I want to say occasions is the right word for it. Um, so you've got lots of choices and occasions that you can choose kits for. And kits are really make a great gift. So as we're starting to approach the holiday season and think about our gift giving needs, kits make a great gift experience, right? You can join your friend, family member, coworker, and get together and have a girl's night out um, and just get away from things, right? Relax have some time to yourself. You could do it alone or you could do it with a friend, right? And just craft, enjoy the experience, have fun together. You don't have to design anything. It's all cut for you. It's all prepped for you. You're just simply gluing it together, which is always a nice, nice feeling. Okay. So this layer right here, let me check my measurements and make sure I'm telling you correct. It is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And I've cut this edge with the scallop contour dies. So this border right here. So we've used these for two of our projects now. Now this heart right here in the middle, you don't have to do it that way, but I'm saving paper here. So I'm using this larger heart in our die set. And I, I was like, you know what? I can cut it right out of this layer because I'm gonna cover it up with this designer paper and you're never gonna see it. So why not take advantage of that and save a little paper, right? So you can get them a little bit more money out of your, your product here make it go a little further. All right, so I'm gonna take my designer paper layer and this is da -da, three by five and a quarter. And we're gonna adhere it right to the front of this flirty flamingo layer. Okay, and then this is gonna go right on our card front and I'm gonna do this flat. It's fine to be flat. You could pop it up if you prefer. I'm just gonna do a flat. And I'm kind of centering it kind of along these three edges here. So I've got a little more white space over to the right. You can do it what makes you happy, right? All right, next. I have die cut this tag right out of that die right there. And we're going to fold that in half. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Okay. So on the inside, we're going to stamp our sentiment. On the outside, we're going to stamp those little blue hearts. I love it. So on the inside, let's grab our flirty flamingo stamp pad and the made with love stamp set or stamp image. And we'll just stamp that on the inside. Again, if you're worried about getting good stamped images, like my first one is not all that great, but it doesn't look terrible. But if you're worried about that, use your stamper at us. That way you could ink it up and stamp more than once. That's not bad. I like that one. And I'm doing it down low because I'm going to add that ribbon and so you're not really going to be able to open it up super wide, which I don't think is a problem. All right, let's add, nope, let's do our stamping and then we'll add our ribbon. Let's put our hearts on there. So for those of you that are more avid stampers, I do have a card club. It is a monthly subscription program, and it is definitely geared towards avid crafters. We do a lot of fun folds because that's my favorite. We do some techniques, but mostly fun folds. And just all around really nice stepped up cards. So if that's something that interests you, um, I'll have a link that I'll post later so that you will have that information. So I'm stamping this twice. I'm not worried about any overlap here because I'm going to add that heart which is gonna cover up any of that there. So we do a variety of things in Card Club. 
This month is all about gift card holders, but they are not average gift card holders. They are definitely stepped up. We've got some pop-ups going on, um, just some really cool, cool elements that we've got going on. This is one of the stamp sets that we're featuring in one of our projects as well. So I'm just stringing my ribbon through, and this is approximately, if I write this down, I'm gonna say another 11 inches or so of ribbon, 11 to 12 inches. You know, it kind of depends on your fingers and what you need to tie with, right? Typically when I do bows, it's anywhere from eight to 12 inches. Again, that could change based on the width of the ribbon, how big of the bow I want, kind of how my fingers are feeling, right? Because sometimes my hands are a little more um, stiff than other times, I'm old, right? <laughs> All right, clip that off. So I just love this. So cute. So let's go ahead and adhere this to the card front. And then we'll go ahead and add our extra layers. All right. So I got excessive with my adhesive. I'm going to let this go at an angle because I think that's cute. All right. So our little heart that we die cut out of our layer. We're gonna add that on. And of course, I'm gonna use dimensionals for that. Why not? Gotta pop something up. Okay. Perfect. All right. And then I wanna do that little sentiment, that XO, XOXO, right? So I've got a scrap of white, bring back in my memento ink and a little XOXO stamp. And we'll add that down. And then we can die cut that banner as well. So keeping it pretty simple, right? Did I not die cut? I did die cut this ahead of time. Let me steal <laughs> and put this one out here. So again, I'm gonna use the edge of my dimensionals or you could use mini dimensionals if you've got some handy. But I'm just going to pull it right off that edge. Put that on the back. And pop that sentiment up. How are you guys liking these? Good projects? Things that you would make? That you could use? I hope so. All right, let's pull in our pink sequins. And again, when you look at that case, the colors don't necessarily 100% match but they do coordinate nicely, I think. So we'll just add a couple, little dots there, maybe one there. You could add a whole bunch if you wanted to. So let's pull some right into the lid again. And we'll grab a couple and place them right on. That looks like I've got two, I sure did. So we'll let that one go there. We'll let this one go here. And let's grab one of these. Mm, see if I can get this little one here. A little opaque white looking one. A little pink to it. Let's see if I can get that to stick down. Let's also let that dry just a smidge and then it should be good to go. Nice, right? Fun. So of course you could bring the design to the inside. Again, I've chosen to leave this particular one completely blank. So, Jean, these are the fancy sequin assortment. Let me see if I can pull out my catalog and show you where they are in the catalog. Um, well, I had a catalog down here. What did I do with it? I hate my idea. All right, I'll pull out my catalog, which is going to be messy. It's going to have writing in it. It's okay. You guys can see all my secrets. I don't care. I'll find it. These right here. So the For Everything Fancy sequence, they're on page 141. And you literally get three containers, one container of each of three colors, and they're $15. But you get a ton, a ton of sequins, right? Like I've used a lot. I've probably made five, six shaker cards out of each color at least, plus all the um, embellishments that I've used them for. So you get all three colors in the pack. Nice, right? 
these were something that I totally missed out of the catalog. And they were actually pointed out last, not this Maker's Mojo we just had, but the Maker's Mojo before Anne Marie had used them on some of her projects when she was making those um, magic shaker cards. And I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Do you guys liking it? All right, so here was our, our love or Valentine inspired. So again, made with love. You could say that any time of the year, I think. All right, then we've got our let's celebrate you. Great birthday card or any time of a congratulation. We've got a Christmas gift card holder. And then this could also be, since I used Be Jolly, could be Christmas as well. Doesn't have to be. Um, I think it's a nice wintry card. I love those mittens. Just love the mittens. So hopefully you guys love these. Yes? All right, I'm gonna switch the camera back over. We'll talk for a second, a minute, whatever. Whatever our hearts desire. Let's see if I can switch it over. There we go. I'm back. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And I appreciate you joining me for tonight. And I hope it was a little fun and exciting. Um, again, don't forget that we have um, a host code with an order special that closes on Monday. So if you, uh, again, if you place an order, you're going to get the, any order. You're going to get a thank you card in the mail for me and the uh, tutorial for the projects we made tonight. And then if your order hits $50 or more, you also get the card kit to make all four cards and then the all-star tutorial bundle for this month, which actually features the Rustic Harvest Suite from the mini catalog. All right. Don't forget, fill out the door price form. Um, the winner is going to get the cards I made this evening, sent to them in the mail. Um, and if you have any desire to host your own online workshop where you can be the host like I was tonight, reach out to me. I'd love to do a card class with you and your friends online. So much fun, right? Such a great way to get together. Um, so I enjoy that. So again, if you have questions on joining my team, joining my card club, uh, I've got lots of different class offers out there as well. If you have questions on anything that I offer, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer those questions and uh, get you what you need to get you going. All right, good. You guys liking it? Let's see if I can check comments. Good, you guys are liking it? Good, good, good. I can tell, yes. Oh, good, you enjoyed it, Barbara. I'm so glad. Jean, you as well? Perfect, perfect. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining me tonight. And if there's any gentleman that's just not saying anything, thank you for joining as well. So perfect. All right, I hope to see you all again soon. And thanks again for joining me tonight. All right. All right. Bye for now.